I don't I don't know how you can know who some of these obscure actors are, but you don't know who Laz Alonso is. Like he is like the epitome of a Hollywood hustler. Seriously, look him up. Hey everyone, it's Jess. Um I said in the last video how I was gonna talk about something interesting that happened at the Black Women's Expo last time I went. I tried to do a video, but then I couldn't like keep a straight face. I keep looking at my boobs. <laughs> I kept giggling. <laughs> this morning, it was a lot of construction going on, so I was like, I'm not gonna do the video. I'm just gonna, you know, move on to something else because it's been too long, and this, plus it's been too long since that happened. But then um, when I was going through my emails to see like if, if I had received any, I got one. John saying, Dear Jessica, I saw recently that you took a picture with Laz Alonzo. He's basically curious to know how that happened. Like I said, it, it happened a few weeks ago and I wasn't going to, to say anything about it because my worst fear is coming across as a groupie. And I don't like that. I mean, I, there are women out there who they're about that life. I'm just not. I'm not going to spread my legs for somebody just because they're in the movie or they're famous or something like that or they got some money because at the end of the day, I'm still going to be broke and fucked. Fangirls, they appreciate someone's work. And I don't know if you guys ever go on Tumblr. I'm on Tumblr and I am a fangirl for at least five celebrities. Uh, a fangirl over, of course, Michael Fassbender, uh, Alexander Skarsgård, uh, Ooh, maybe not five, maybe just three. Michael Fassbender, Alexander Skarsgård, it, no, it's five, I had to. Michael Fassbender, Alexander Skarsgård, Laz Alonzo, Lance Gross, and Jason Momoa. Those are my five, those are my top five people that I fangirl over. When I was told that he was gonna be at the Black Women's Expo, I got really excited um, because I, of course, knew that my neighbors are so fucking loud. I knew his birthday had just passed. I thought that it would be a great idea for me to give him a card. So what I did was I just bought, uh, I just, I, not really bought, I just got a uh, thank you card really didn't remember what I wrote. I just wrote it and just was like, I'm, I'm gonna give this to Laz for his birthday. He was he was gonna be a guest speaker at the Black Women's Expo. So I went to the room where he was gonna be speaking and I sat there and I waited for him to go, to come. The room just went from like being just a few um, people to being like completely packed from like wall to wall women everywhere. So I'm just sitting there like, I'm glad I got my seat when I did because it, it would have been no way <laughs> for me to be able to see him. Um, especially being like five foot two, double zero, way in the back. I wouldn't be able to see him. First of all, let me point out just this one thing. He was scheduled to speak at like, I believe like 2.30. Homie got there at like 2.20 or whatever, early as shit. This, to me, sealed the deal on the fact that I was gonna be a eternal fangirl of Laz Alonzo. And he was early. He was early. He came straight to the mic and just started talking. Um, it came time for uh, the host. I think it was Demi Lobo. Um, I don't know who that is, but apparently she's a radio DJ and I haven't listened to the radio since Crazy Howard McGee was on WGCI. That was a long time ago. Demi Lobo said that she was going to open up the floor for questions for Laz Alonzo. I knew right then and there, this is my opportunity. I didn't really think that that would happen. I thought that like maybe there might be a meet and greet after like he speaks and I might be able to hand him the birthday card, but I didn't know that there was actually going to be a question and answer segment. So I was like, I'm doing this. I was number two in line at the mic. Uh, and the lady in front of me said something raunchy that kind of like embarrassed me as a person. I was just like, that is so nasty. And then um, he answered equally as raunchy. I believe she said something along the lines of, well, you say you don't have a preference as far as like weight and height. Do you have a preference as far as age? And that to me was kind of like raunchy because of his answer. He said that he likes his meat seasoned. Like immediately when he said that, I was like thinking of Laurie seasoned salt 
flavored vagina. She left and I was finally my turn at the mic and of course, what happens to me, I lose my voice. So I'm sitting, I'm standing there, I'm looking at Laz Alonzo who was just gorgeous and beautiful and regal and I finally found my voice. I spoke in the mic and I, I told him that I was, a, I was a huge fan of his. I had been for a really long time in that uh, I didn't have a question um, or a comment. I just had a birthday card from him. And the whole room said, oh, and I asked him if I can give it to him. He said, of course. And so I, I'm walking. I believe I walked my best walk. I don't know. I don't know if I was like fidgety because I know me and I also don't know if I tripped. I handed him the card, he gave me a hug. I got to touch his arms. And this is where I got stuck when I was filming the last video. His arms, his arms, <laughs> his arms. I don't think you realize, his arms. From after hugging him, I walked right back down the stairs and just pretty much floated all the way back to my seat. I don't remember really anything. Apparently I gave somebody a high five and I, I sat back down in my, in my chair and I just went like this, like, cause I knew that like, I was just smiling. My smile when I'm like super excited kind of reminds me of when Squints kissed the lifeguard in the sandlot. And it was a lot of people asking me questions like, oh my God, what do you feel like? What did he smell like? I don't remember what he smelled like, but he ain't smell bad because I would, I probably would have remembered that shit. He wrapped up his speech and then he did a meet and greet where he met just about every single person in the room. He shook their hand, he talked to them, and I believe like he was running late for a flight, but I don't know if like that really mattered uh, or was a big deal to him because he didn't come across like that. It was more so the other people around him like, he needs to leave, he needs to do this. Five more people, okay, 10 more people. And it was like, but he sat there and he, he talked to every single person. And that to me will stick out in my head. And so from this point on, well, from that point on, from, first of all, it was like, he showed up early to something that he could have been late to, <clears throat> like somebody else. Number two, he met with every single one of his fans. I don't know if I should do this or this or what about this? The third reason why I will always be a Lazo Lazo fan, I will support anything that he does, is because the very next day, I had been beaming the entire Saturday and I woke up that Sunday like, ugh. Like I looked out my window and it was still like wet and damp and cold outside and I just rolled right back over and went to sleep. Got like three buzzes on my phone. And I looked at my phone and I immediately perked up because like I got three messages. Laz Alonzo tagged you in the picture. Laz Alonzo, Alonzo liked your picture. Laz Alonzo mentioned you in the status. I didn't think that he was gonna re really read it. And like, I mean, yeah, like, although like he had showed up early, he had talked to each and every single one of his female fans. I still didn't think like number three that he was really gonna like do anything with the letter. I thought like, oh, it might, oh, that's nice. You know, toss it out. But he actually read it and I really appreciate that. I will always be a, be a fan just because of those three reasons. That speaks volumes to me. So yeah, that John is how I got my picture with Laz Alonzo. Like I've been a fan of, of his for a really long time. I blame Laz Alonzo for me being late my entire year of eighth grade. It was his fault. I used to wake up extra early just to watch AM at BUT, watch it, and then leave out and be late for school. Missed the entire first period because of AM at BET. His arms. <laughs>